This one is about the purpose in royal land, and I believe that God has something powerful in store for each and every of us. In just a few minutes, I'm going to go through this. And I pray that as you receive God's word, your lives will never remain the same. Yeah. You didn't come here by accident. God ordered your steps. You, nothing just happens by happenstance. There is a reason why God chose for you to be there. It could be the excuse could be that Linda is celebrating her birthday. The excuse can be that you are just passing by and you heard a noise and you enter the church. The excuse can be that you know there will be jollof rice and chicken after this. All things work together for good to them that love God and them that called according to purpose. Amen. Amen. Father, we receive your word into our hearts this morning Amen. and we declare that your word will have a free course. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let that be entrance of your word to the to the simple. Let it bring light and life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your word says you send your word and you heal them and you deliver them out of all their destruction. Every plan of destruction for any life here today will be disappointed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We receive your wisdom. We receive your guidance in Jesus. We pray. Amen. Praise God. You may please be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. Walk with, with me this morning. By the grace of God, I believe that God has something in store for you and I. I know that the one who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. I've been speaking on purpose discovery, and we've entered into that series of teaching from the anniversary celebration we had last week. Amen. Amen. And throughout this month, I want to encourage you, both our friends and visitors, if you can make it a day to be part of what we're doing here every Sunday, it will be in your best interest and we will also rejoice with you. Amen. Amen. Because we know that here our mission and our vision is packaged to empower you to realize your royal destinies. Amen. And throughout this month, from 9 to 11 every Sunday, we're going to be having this amazing teaching series. Firstly, I'd like to delve into the mystery of predestination. Someone said the mystery of predestination. The mystery of predestination. Our text this morning from Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 uh, speaks of an encounter of a prophet in the Bible with God. Hallelujah. By the name Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, the scripture says, God spoke to Jeremiah and said to him, Before I formed thee in the belly, how many of you know where the belly is? I'm sure you will talk the physical belly. But do you know there is also a spiritual womb? Hallelujah. Do you also know that there is also a spiritual pain? Now if something is going to change in Nigeria in the next two months, is already in the womb somewhere, getting ready to be birthed. Am I talking to somebody? Uh, something is about to be birthed in your life this month that you have no idea of before now. And I pray that God will open your eyes to see it. Amen. Is that a good prayer? That God open my eyes to see what you have in store for me. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. So before I formed thee in the belly, the Lord said, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, this conversation between God and Jeremiah sets a pattern of how God operates for each one of us. Am I talking to somebody? Firstly, there is the knowing of God. How I wish you know what God knows about you right now. Your life can never remain the same. Just imagine that you know what God knows about your life in the next one year, in the next two years. You know, He said, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. God has thoughts towards each one of us. There is something God knows about you that you ought to know now. Now, not tomorrow, not later. 
Because the earlier you know it, the better it will be for you. Just imagine now that um, maybe in the next two weeks, Naira to dollar rate will fall to maybe 600 to a Naira. I mean, Naira to a dollar. I'm sure that knowledge will benefit those of you that are in business. Maybe if you want to buy something now, you will hold on. You know what? I'll wait <laughs> because you already know. So that you don't lose money. Am I talking to somebody? You know, that's the same way they do around the oil now. I mean, and petrol. You see the scarcity of oil. Now, people are speculating. They, they don't really know. They're not really sure. They have an idea, but they're not so sure. They're like, you know what? Let's go down to this product. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen next so that we don't run into losses. You know, I had an interesting experience. I was supposed to buy a car worth 20 million. And suddenly the price, the, the price of Naira to dollar changed. Dollar went higher. I had to hold on. The car that was worth 20 million that I wanted to buy had become 40 million. So I put it aside. I said, you know what? <laughs> Let's wait. That's knowledge. Playing out in decision. There are things that if you don't know now and you don't act on them now, you run a lack of loss. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, God said, My people are destroyed not for plenty of devils, but for lack of knowledge. You know, if you can reverse or rewind your life to like 10 years from now and compare the things you know now to the things you knew then. I'm sure you would have made better decisions somebody. Because as you are growing, you are getting wiser. As you are growing, you are getting to grow better. Am I talking to somebody? That is how important the knowledge of God's purpose for your life is to your destiny. That is how important. Okay, so you want to get married. There are certain things you need to know about the purpose of God for that marriage before you get into it. So that you'll be able to operate it with the manufacturer's manual. Am I talking to somebody? It's like getting this keyboard from Yamaha. Okay, the time we ordered it, we ordered it on Jimmy and they delivered it, right? It came with a manual. And inside that manual, we began to look at how do you ensure that when you plug it to the power, it doesn't explode or damage the equipment. That's how come it has lasted several years. So we follow the instruction in the manual. We follow the instruction of the manufacturer who created it to operate it according to the design of the manufacturer so that it can fulfill its purpose and last. Hallelujah. Amen. So to last and to fulfill your purpose, you need to default and defer always to the manufacturer's manual. That is the mystery of predestination. That God sat down and before he formed you, he knew something about you that he wanted you to do on earth and he designed you for that purpose exactly. That is why you don't need to compare your life with somebody else's life because you are uniquely created for a particular purpose. Every time you are you are created for a purpose. When you stand in your place and you are on your lane, you don't have any competitor. The only competitor you have is you. You are in a class of your own in God's creation. In God's predestination, He puts you as number one in your own class to lead in your own class to fill your purpose without having a sense of this, you know, a dissatisfaction. Before I found thee in the belly, I knew thee. So, what God knows is written somewhere, just like David said in Psalm 139, I think He said. All the days of my life are written in your book. So God has a book where something is written about you, about me. And you need to begin to hunger to know what is in that book. The earlier you discover what is in that book, <laughs> the better. You know, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 5, it said, And I went with much. Because there was no one worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. And the Bible says that 
the an angel called and said, Do not weep. For the Lamb of God that was slain, he has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. He opened that book concerning you, concerning me. And he said, And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That's how you form royal land. That's, that's what the meaning of this church is. This church came from that book that Jesus opened. The name of this church came from that book. We discovered our purpose, our essence, that we were not here to what to be underdogs. We're not here to serve without rewards. We're not here to be on servitude. We are here to reign on the earth. That's the end point of our journey. We are here to reign. To reign, to reign. Somebody say, I am here to reign. I am here to reign. I'm here to lead. I am here to set the pace. I'm here to blaze the trail. He said, You shall be the head and not the tail. It's written in the book. Am I talking to somebody? And it's, there's another precedence. Not only did he form you and created you to be unique the way you are, you know, people try to make fun of look or what you are how you speak and no there's nothing to be there's nothing funny about it everything about it is beautiful because the bible says according to david he said i am fearfully and wonderfully made why because the person that created me is head is correct he cannot create nonsense so god didn't sit down and 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 looked at you from before eternity to the end of eternity and make nonsense out of what is coming to this planet. That is why your self-esteem should not come from comparison with other people. Your self-esteem should come from what is written in the book concerning you. He said to me, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He, he made me out of great material. God wanted to create, to create man. He could not find any other thing but himself. He said, let us make man in our likeness and in our image. And what would they do with that likeness and image? They will function like us. They will be gods on the earth. He said, I have said, ye are gods, sons of the Most High, each one of you. So you are meant to function on this planet like a god. That means whatever you say must come to pass. That's why he warned us to be careful what we say. Be careful what you say. Say you shall have whatever you say. Only God speak and it comes to pass. Hope you know that. So you are a God. And the moment you realize what is in your makeup, you now become more discreet about how you use yourself, how you engage yourself, how you communicate, how you get involved with people and with things. You now be more selective in your friendship. In your business, in your career choices, because you have an understanding of your makeup. You are not for everybody and you are not for everywhere. You belong to a specific place in a particular time and season of your life to fulfill a specific purpose. And the moment you identify your place, your struggle comes to an end. Before thou camest forth from the womb, I sanctify thee. So, you have been sanctified if you know Christ. He sanctified you for that purpose. So, that purpose and that dictate of God over your life is sacrosanct. Nothing can change it. You have been separated from the masses. You have been distinguished before you were born. So, you can't but be a person that attains the level of distinction that will make the world wow. Am I talking to somebody? Now let's default again. If I begin to break down this, we may not even live there. Say, I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Can you see that? That sets a pace for what God is doing about your life. That means you have an international future. Nations. You are not meant to be a local champion. That they only know you in Sulleri. That's you have not reached your destination yet. You are only on the journey. Your destination of 
greatness has been established in his word that nations we hear of you. Thank God for technology now. It's very, it's very easy to even go abroad. It's very easy to be heard over and abroad. I know people that are working from Nigeria and they are earning dollars locally. International. They've broken the barriers. Visa should not be your problem if you're in this church and if you're a child of God. I've always said it to you guys. In this church, visa can never be our problem. Because in the book, we have seen it. Nations. Nations. You want to go anywhere around the world? The door will open for you in the name of Jesus. And that amen is to it. Even amen. Romans chapter 8. I'm still speaking of the mystery of predestination. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 21. He said, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. That's the foundation. Do you love God? Are you called according to his purpose? Have you answered his call into your purpose for being on this planet? There is something indeed before you were born. He attached you to an assignment and said, this is my purpose for you. I ordained you for this purpose when you come out of your mother's womb. So if you align yourself with that purpose for which God allowed you to come to this planet, what happened? It says all things will work together for your good. So that you can fulfill that purpose. When you come into agreement with God and say, God, I'm no longer fighting you. I want to do what your will is for my life. When you come to that space of agreement with God, that there is an understanding between you and God that, you know what, I'm no longer running like Jonah. You know, in the Bible, Jonah. Jonah was called by God to go to Nineveh. And he began to run. Until, the, until he ended up in the belly of the fish. And until the fish permitted him back to go and do that assignment. Nothing went well. Some of the struggles some of us are experiencing in life today is not because you are not competent. It's not because you are not smart. It's just simply because you are in the wrong place with God. It's just simply because you have, you, you have deviated from your original assignment with God. When you see people struggling, now, first of all, please come, let me do an illustration. Now, the Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. When something is out of disorder, what do you think will happen? Okay, please, stretch your hand up, down. Do you feel any pain? Why? Because it's in order for your hand to go in that direction. Okay, now, try to go like this. Try now, try. Try harder. Harder. Should I press it up? No, why? Yeah, what are you feeling? Pain. Why it is out of order for his hand to move in that direction. When you feel pain in life, check the order. Check the order. Is something out of order in my life? Emotional pains, academic play, pains, financial pains, you know, pains of not moving forward satisfactorily. These are pointers to disorder because it's not where it's supposed to be. That is why there's so much pain. Many years ago, when I was on campus, I made my own personal discovery for my life. You know, back then, friends, they used to tell me, you talk too much, you talk too much, you talk too much. And I'll be like, why, why are you telling me I talk too much? To me, I'm just talking normally. To me, that's normal. I'm just talking normally. But to somebody else, it means talking too much. Okay, so I began to research into my talking because it's causing me pain. Instead of getting approvals, I'm getting backlash. Am I talking to somebody? So I began to find out what purpose is my talking for? 
so that when I open my mouth to talk, I'll be talking what people would like to hear and what is relevant. Am I talking to somebody? So, the same guy that when he wants to talk, they say he's talking too much. Suddenly, about my assignment and my purpose and what God wants me to be talking about, the complaint ended. Instead of the complaint, I started getting commendation. Wow, that was a fantastic message. Wow, that was a fantastic point. Wow, that was a fantastic presentation. Wow, wow, wow. In fact, at the time I was so confused. I thought maybe they just have a problem with me and they, they, are, they are jealous or something. Maybe there's a problem somewhere. I don't know. Suddenly, I began to study. I, I started reading books. Started reading materials that I want to find out what is my purpose. In fact, the confusion was so much on campus. One time, I, I resumed to campus and said, that, you know, when you have gone on a long break and you now come back, and then you do your new session resolutions. I know this semester, they will not hear me talk again. So I came that semester, I kept quiet. When you greet me, I just said, hello, you? Nothing more than that. Week one, the fight started it me. Are you not going to talk or you will die? Oh? <laughs> this is what God created you to do. You must talk. Oh. If you don't talk, you will die. Oh. <sighs> I went to another week. Let's see. People start saying, I think I don't talk anymore. It doesn't talk, it doesn't talk. Oh. Ah, it has changed. Truth to God, the change was looking like it's happening, but I was dying inside. Because that is not God's purpose. God wants me to talk. And the one that doesn't know what he wants me to say. By the second week, I busted. Not He has not changed. He thinks he can fool on the bus. He still talk. I say, talk at him. Do you see how frustrated some of us can be because you are living your life based on what people are telling you? Instead of you to discover what you know, sometimes when they say some things, it may be a pointer, but it shouldn't point you to the negative direction where you want to be somebody else and become somebody that you are not. It should push you to the place of self-discovery. So it pushed me to a place of self-discovery. And I began to study materials and books. I bought one book one, book one time, Right Relationships. That was the subject of that book. I read through it back to back. And I caught a revelation of my purpose right inside that book. And I began to tell myself, oh, wow. So this is part of my life's assignment. To establish right relationship, right relationship between God and Man, so I wrote it down. Can you see how practical this is? I wrote it down. So, if you find today in a mission and vision as a ministry, establishing the right relationships between God and man, how through talking, <laughs> through the preaching and the teaching of the word of faith. So, I now know what to say. I now know how to use that talking as a gift, but it doesn't end there. A quality product that is not well packaged will never be appreciated. So I also have to start learning and training how to communicate, communication skills, business communication skills, writing skills, presentation skills, standing in the pulpit, how to hold the mic, how to address the audience. You begin to refine that gift in line with your purpose. This talking has taken me abroad. I was in Manchester after I completed my training in the College of Public Speaking in London. And the pastor friend in Reading in Manchester said, Big up, we need you to come. Come and train us. Come and train our workers. After that train, that was the first place I flew to. I went on train, bam, to Manchester. And just like a Sunday morning after service, they had training for their staff and church workers and all of that. That was the first training I did after my training. The training of my gift 
position me on a level where I can function as much as I want in divine purpose. It didn't end in church. It's also become useful in a corporate organization. In my former place of work, GT Bank, the HR, they will partner with me. I said, we need you to come and do career talk. I've been doing, I've been doing career talks. Career talks. People they employ new entrants. You see, maybe I come and talk to them. And then you see how discovery of purpose can change your life. Some of you, you may not be talking. Maybe something else that you have discovered that you have. Some of you will enter into kitchen. Let them put all the raw materials there. By the time you come back to check that kitchen, you have transformed it into a yummy something. Hallelujah. Some of you just know how to do clothes. Some of you just know how to package gifts or organize events or do something to connect people, networking. Some of you, it's money you know how to handle. Some of you are very good with figures. You have that gift. You have that grace. Some of us, it is driving. You but you can drive from here to Sokoto and not be tired. You may end up becoming the owner of a big transport. That's how you have the effects. The ABC transport of today. So many. There is gift. Some of it is farming. You know about the weather. You know about crops. You just have that grace of turning something like a seed into a great farm. You know how to do things that others can't do. Why are you sitting on this gold mine and looking? Some of you, you have a passion, passion for God. You just want to serve God. You want to be a pastor. You want to be a minister, an evangelist, a prophet. You want to be that in the kingdom of God. Why are you holding back from what God has ordained you to be? You see, the secret of your life is inside you. The secret of your success is hidden inside you. That's why when you read the scriptures, it said, for those, verse 29, it said, for those who he did for new, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. Those who he called, then he also justified. And those who he justified, he also glorified. Meaning that that calling that he has given you that is on your inside is what will take you to your destination of glory. To your destination of glory. It doesn't matter where you are right now. As long as you answer to God's call on your life, as long as you say yes to his purpose for your own destiny, you will begin to go from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from levels to levels. Because the Bible tells us that all things work together for good to them that love God and them that are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next slide. I will not from there. The mystery of predestination is also that when you understand this mystery, you will discover that God did not design man to function away from him. We were designed to function with God. Just as fish cannot do without water, just as a car cannot do without the petrol, I mean, of course, except it's designed to work with something else, but the ones that are to work with petrol, if you don't put petrol in it, it will not go anywhere. So they have to redesign them to be able to function in a different way. Do you understand now? We have the green, you know, energy technology coming up. Alternative energies. Where cars cannot use electricity. They have to still charge them. No matter the design, they are designed to be dependent on a source of power, a source of energy. That's the same way God designed us. You are not designed to be independent of God. That's what the Bible says in Psalm 127, from verse 1 to 2. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that 
build it. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not labor in, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not struggle and struggle and struggle and discover that you have been walking outside of God's purpose for your life. You know this ladder of success that people are always talking about. Ladder of success. You have been, you're working in a corporate environment and there's a ladder of success. You go from this level to the next, to the next, to the next. Don't get to the end of that ladder and find out that that ladder is leaning on the wrong wall. There are people outside of the church that are functioning today that have made it big. Now, it's very possible to begin to look at that once and say, ah, it. It's but have we found out from them personally what they have to say about that success itself? So them are living a miserable life and they won't tell you openly. You need to come close to some celebrities to know that they are not, they are not, uh, they have been bombristicalized. <laughs> Let me leave that story for another day. Amen. Amen. They are successful. They are successful. They are looking. They are looking successful. Does not mean they are actually successful. The Bible says to us in Joshua chapter verse eight. Said this book of the law shall not be found out of your mouth, but you will meditate upon it day and night to observe to do all that is written therein. Then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. There is good success and there is bad success. I want to have good success. And I want you to have good success. It is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow with it. The way some of us pursue marriage, especially the men or women of our both sexes, ah, God, I like that yellow sister. She must be the one or I die. You may get what you like, when you don't like, you may not like what you get. Does she have character? I like that man. That brother is very is loaded. <laughs> I saw one joke on TikTok yesterday. Say, Pastor, you don't want TikTok? Yes. I saw one yesterday. A husband, he tricked his wife. The wife have been putting pressure on him. Buy me this, buy me that. See your friend. He bought so 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 for his wife. That one, he bought Padero. This one, he sent his wife to Dubai. This one, he checked the house. He bought something. He did, he did. Uh, the man said, Hey, what am I going to do? He has the house girl to pretend as if she has been hypnotized. Now lay down on the chair in the parlor. As he was shaking, then money is money was praying for the mother. So he now looked as if they used that to do to do for money, you know. So went upstairs and brought his wife downstairs. He closed her eyes. He said, Baby, I have a surprise for you. He said, Yeah, hey, okay. And I came down the staircase and all of that. And then he came down and he said, Please, you know, you've been telling me. That you know, like my friend, this one, like that one, like this one, like that one. I should do this, I should do that. I should do this, I should do that. I am about to fulfill that promise now. I have a surprise for you. In fact, you will get everything that you are asking for and more. So, he said, Are you ready? Say, Yes. Are you ready? Say, yes. yes. <laughs> and then he opened the eyes, and then she saw somebody shaking on the, on the, on the sofa. <laughs> Money all over again. I said, ah, what is this? What is this? He said, I don't you remember that you told me that the way to make it up, but so, so, so for his wife. He want me to, eh, want to do, you know, money, something, so that I'll be able to buy everything for you. And you know, it has not finished though. So. Uh, this one will not be enough. I need to add you to this one. <laughs> so that the whole thing can be very complete. You know, he said, I beg him. He said, No, please, you know, I will not judge you again. I will not disturb you again. I will not this, I will not that. After a while, I told the girl, Would you, will you get up from there? Nonsense. Get up. The girl has to go through. And I said, Ah, you this man. He will bring me while you. He said, But you see now, I have to go through all this wahala 
so that you can let me rest. It is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow with it. See, you come to Real Land today, you look at chairs, left, right, and center, you say, where are the people? I am contented. I will not go and look for power from them outside Jesus so that the whole of Sue Lily can be part of this church. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I have read the story of one pastor. He got corrupted. He got corrupted because he was so hungry to blow. He wanted to blow. You know, some of you are very much in a hurry to blow. That's why we have so many Yahoo boys now. Our else get he wanted to blow pa, 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 pa. Mm -hmm. because he wanted to blow. He went to look for one pastor. I don't call them pastor, they are fake. In Abuja, that one now took him to Bota. To Bad Came back to Lagos, Bad Beach, more reports. He started having all sorts of dreams, demonic oppression. Many times they will appear to him and say, You're going to die. That man, before he died, confessed all the things that he did. He died before his time. There is nothing in this world. There is nothing. Everything you see is temporary. The Bible says the things that are not seen, they are it. So set our focus on the things that are above. I like to use this pity this morning. You are in this house, you don't know Christ. Or maybe you're really with him, your relationship with him is not where it's supposed to be. I will give you an opportunity this morning and we will pray. You don't have to get up or come out. Wherever you are, it's between you and him. You're going to tell God and say, Lord, I'm using this leader's bad day as a point of contact for my life. Testimony. And you also heard Jennifer's testimony. You know, he said, in the matter of two or three, the truth, the truth shall be established. Now, I, I used to know Linda, but no, she's no longer the same Linda I used to know. Rise up to your feet this morning. Jesus Christ said, I am the vine. John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. I'd like you to lift up your hands to heaven.